action games that focus on slow and methodical combat aren't exactly a niche genre anymore. In the last few years, they've become positively ubiquitous. These games tout their above average difficulty as a selling point and reward careful strategizing over mindless button mashing, offering the player a more thoughtful experience than your average hack and slash adventure. But while especially the Dark Souls series is often heralded as the harbinger for this new wave of methodical action games, the roots of this genre stretch back to a title that came almost a decade before even Demon's Souls was first released. Onimusha Warlords. This classic hybrid of action-adventure and survival horror was released by Capcom exclusively for the PS2 in 2001, and up until this day, it remains one of my favorite forgotten gems. When playing Onimusha Warlords for the first time, the first thing that came to mind, at least for a notorious horror game fanatic like yours truly, is that it borrows heavily from the formula of classic survival horror legends such as the Resident Evil series. And while this is true for many of its technical aspects, like the style of alone-in-the-dark-like pre-rendered backgrounds, fixed camera angles and the way it mixes combat, inventory management, save locations, story and puzzle, it becomes quickly apparent that Onimusha offer a unique spin on the classic survival horror formula. Rather than pitting you against zombies, dinosaurs, or eldritch demons. The game borrows heavily from Japanese mythology. As the notorious warrior magician Samanosuke, you'll face off against the bestiary's worth of Japanese demons, lumbering ogres, skeleton foot soldiers, demonic shinobi, undead oni warlords, and slimy tentacle human hybrids. The game is set in the Sengoku Jidai period of Japanese history, a massive civil war that consumed the entire country for over 200 years. Onimusha is based on the real history of this era to spin its tale of corruption, betrayal and conquest. The protagonist Samanosuke is based on the famous Japanese samurai Akechi Hidematsu, and the game's big bad is none other than the demon-possessed Oda Nobunaga, the brutal warlord who nearly succeeded in unifying Japan under his iron grip. Like its survival war predecessors, this game is all about methodical exploration and puzzle solving in a relatively small and confined field of play. You'll explore and backtrack through the halls of Inabayama Castle, solving puzzles and slaying monsters in search of the missing Princess Yuki. Now, while the game's systems are mostly centered around combat and puzzles, there are also some light RPG elements that allow you to customize Samanosuke's progression. Slaying monsters rewards you with souls that you suck up in a manner that loudly screams Legacy of Gain Soul Reaver. And with those souls, you can gradually upgrade your weapons and unlock new abilities. The game employs beautiful, lushly detailed pre-rendered backgrounds that were dazzling at the time and still hold up quite nicely today. And yes, just like all of your classic survival horror favorites, this game has tank controls and you'll need every single one of those upgrade souls you can collect, because especially the early parts of the game can be quite a challenge if you're unfamiliar with the control scheme. If you just charge in swinging your sword blindly, you're very likely to see the game over screen before you even get to the first save point. Victory in Onimusha often means taking your time, patiently observing the enemy's patterns and movements, and then charging in to strike at the exactly right moment. It emanates the suspense and thrill of a good Kurosawa duo. Only against evil Shinto demons. While the combat mechanics might be an acquired taste for some, the atmosphere and setting are true crowd pleasers for horror fans. Onimusha is masterfully paced and oozes atmosphere. There is a constant sense of looming dread as the tension gradually escalates and the stakes climb higher and higher. 
The scenes of battlefield horror witnessed in the opulent render cutscene at the beginning of the game are vicious and gruesome indeed, but yet at the end of the 8-10 to 10 hour long single player campaign, they'll feel tame in comparison to the gnarled abominations and grisly body horror you'll witness during your descent into the dungeons deep beneath Inabayama. And of course, no early 2000s Japanese survival horror title would be complete without a truly terrible English dub. Samonosuke, it's really you. Oh, I knew that you would come to save me. I have missed you so much since you left the castle. Luckily, the Western PS2 release features the much better original Japanese voiceover with English subtitles, which I'd highly recommend, not just for battle-hardened weebs. But in retrospect, Onimusha's combat system is truly worth exploring further, because it is where the game really shines. Samonosuke has the standard attack, block, dodge and quick turn moves, and many additional combos like kicks and sword thrusts that truly add strategic depth to your combat style, especially in combination with the versatile attack and movement patterns of the various enemies you encounter. While it's definitely possible to somehow button mash your way through the game, you'll be neglecting one of the most appealing parts of it, the Isen critical hit system. Samonosuke can perform three different types of criticals, each of which is easy enough to understand, but hard to master. For instance, you can perform a deflect Isen by blocking just before an enemy strike lands. If your timing is right, you can immediately follow it up with a counterattack or one-hit kill on a regular enemy. Sounds familiar? Well, put one more dollar in the Dark Souls comparisons jar. Besides that, the critical Isen is very similar to the deflect Isen, but with an added twist. Rather than block before the enemy's hit lands, you must attack instead. It's a more difficult and risky version of the standard parry, but it rewards you with more souls for your daring efforts. And lastly, there is the Chain Isen. By precisely timing your attacks after you complete an Isen, you can perform additional critical hits to instantly kill nearby enemies as well. The combat also boasts some extremely solid audiovisual feedback, satisfying sound effects and visual cues when you've successfully performed a parry or killed an enemy. There's really no need for progression systems or Pavlovian stimulus here. You'll want to learn the mechanics purely because they're so much fun and they feel so good to master. It's a perfect example how, if you boil it down, there's nothing better to keep players engaged than satisfying, polished moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. There was, quite literally, nothing else like Onimusha when it was released. Onimusha Warlords was quite well received upon release becoming the first PS2 game to sell more than a million copies. It went on to double those sales figures, and was eventually ported to the original Xbox in 2002 as Genma Onimusha. And even though it was originally conceived as a trilogy, it ultimately got three sequels in total, one of which actually features Jean Reno as an actor, which is kind of cool. N'oublie pas de te brosser les dents. And in many ways, Onimusha Warlords is a dark mirror to another title released by Capcom in the same year. The original Devil May Cry. Like DMC, Onimusha was also conceived by Capcom as a spin-off to the Resident Evil series under the working title Sengoku Biohazard. And supposedly, Devil May Cry's combat was directly inspired by a bug during Onimusha's development that kept enemies floating in the air infinitely when you attacked. Hence the juggling combat mechanics of Devil May Cry. But where Devil May Cry's influence was immediately felt in the genre of frenetic, fast-paced character action games it inspired, Onimusha had a more subtle legacy. With its pioneering mix of puzzles, combat and survival horror atmosphere, it laid the groundwork for the beloved Souls-like genre of the modern era. And until recently, it used to be the very definition of a forgotten gem. 
Capcom is notorious for preserving video game history and re-releasing their catalog. But this classic PS2 jewel had for some reason languished in their vaults for a long time, with no sign anyone ever intended to touch it again. But fortunately, this is about to change, as we'll soon be able to experience this highly influential masterpiece on modern systems. Capcom recently announced the upcoming release of a full HD remaster of Onimusha Warlords, scheduled for January 2019 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So if you're a fan of survival horror or Souls-like games, or if you crave a deep dive into Shinto mythology, or if you're just a sucker for super satisfying combat systems, there's never been a better time to dive back into a true forgotten gem. Hello everyone, and thank you for watching. I've got two more things before I let you go. The first thing is that the footage for Onimusha in this video was recorded with a PCSX2 PlayStation 2 emulator, optimized for full HD resolutions and DirectX 11 hardware. If you want to play it like this yourself, I've provided a link to a Google Doc down in the description with a few tips and tricks on how to get it running flawlessly. And lastly, a little shameless plug. If you enjoyed this video, Patreon is what keeps this channel afloat and helps me pay for rent, bills and, you know, food. If you'd like to help out, then just click the card in the top right that just popped up, or follow the link in the description to my Patreon page and pitch in for a dollar or two, or whatever you can spare. It's highly appreciated. My thank you goes of course out to all the people who already support me there, and a special thanks goes out to these top tier supporters this month. Arcel Marcusson, Quentin Prodome, Thwagum, Evan Tecre, Nicolas Rosa Pooch, Chuck Taylor, Murak Casardis, Nolani Talamoni, Midorino, Max Herbert, Micha Nesla, Alex Lake, Carl Yira, Jin Hansen, Carlos Bellari, Michael Spiner IV, Pascal Fehling, Brian Vieira, Roman Wasenmüller, Ten of Spades, Adriel Garcia, Malim, Matt Davis, Dominic Hitai Bako, Maxwell Brown, James Lynch, Kaspar Ram, Mr. Burgadon, Andrei Kriakushin, Sakis Luliusidis, Nick Lazell, Jonathan Irwin, Dennis Pfefferkorn, Cholek, Julia, Susanna Maria, Adam Burr, David Zelenak, Nathan DeGrand, Sebastian Garcia, Martin Schmid, Jacob Woodward, Vida Daly, The Melting Squad, Lucas, Sean Quigley, David Nadeau, Vladimir Baciu, Augustin Ortega, Adam Cross, Liam Jones, Cameron Richter, Ellen Wilder, Alex Zelma, Syriagneth Eliasson, Lord Inquisitor, Zach Plord, Michael Grillo, Snapping Snapper, and Brian F. Until next time, ta-da!